Coming up, sick and tired? The best way is to help fight off those colds and viruses and make you feel better. Also, this eight-year-old boy is a go-getter and thinking outside of the box. We've got the details coming up. Then, top scientist, this 14-year-old girl took home a top award for inventing headphones that can help treat ear infections. Since children don't always want to swallow a huge antibiotic pill, I wanted to find a method that children would actually enjoy. And meet Amira. She's one of the newest friends on Sesame Street and has an important message for kids. I think it's so important that you make a strong uh, connection with friends. Plus, the Grinch turned 65 and tributes this week for the man behind Snoopy and the Peanuts Gang. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you guys. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. We've got a terrific lineup ahead. One of the newest neighbors on Sesame Street will be here, and we can't wait for you to meet this young scientist. But first, let's begin on the health front. We've spent a lot of time in this program talking about the coronavirus and how to best protect ourselves. But it's also cold and flu season, so we asked our good pal, Dr. John Torres, to explain how you can get better if you do get sick. Sometimes, even when we do everything right, viruses sneak into our body and they can make us sick, regardless of what type of illness. COVID, the common cold, the flu, a sore throat, or even a stomach bug, we do have a few tools to fight them off. The first, sleep. When you're sick, your immune system is working really hard to fight off the virus. This will make you more tired than usual. You want to get as much rest and sleep as possible because sleep slows down other functions your body does while awake, like thinking, talking, and even blinking. This saves energy so your immune system can keep fighting. To help you feel better, your parents may give you some medications that they got at the store or from your doctor. These can relieve symptoms like coughing, fever, or a sore throat. The most important thing when you're sick, stay hydrated. It's very important that you drink a lot of fluids. That can include water, fruit juices, or sports drinks. Why? Well, all the cells in your body need water in order to work properly. And when you're sick, it's especially important because water helps the immune system create more antibodies. And remember, antibodies, those soldiers, are what fight off viruses. Now, what about food? Well, you may have heard the phrase, feed a cold, starve a fever. But kids, this is a myth. Yes, a myth. Regardless of whether you have a cold, the flu, or something else, you want to try to eat because food gives your body energy to fight the virus. Fruits, vegetables, and peanut butter are some good options. But sometimes getting sick causes you to lose your appetite. And if that happens, try eating plain foods like crackers or toast. And there's nothing better than a comforting bowl of chicken noodle soup when you're sick. And it really does help you get better. It thins the mucus in your nose and throat to make you less congested, and it helps hydrate you. And when you combine all these tools together, sleep, fluids, food, and medication, it can help you get better faster. Dr. John Torres, thanks very much. Really important information there. Now to other stories making news. Hawaii's Mauna Loa volcano is erupting for the first time since 1984. Did you know this volcano is the biggest active volcano on Earth and it's located on Hawaii's Big Island? Officials say the eruption is no threat to nearby communities, but they're keeping a very close eye and monitoring the situation. Now, we've got a special segment to share with you this week about a new friend on one very famous street. I recently had a chance to catch up with Amira, one of the newest friends on Sesame Street. Amira is part of the Arabic language version of Sesame Street that airs in the Middle East and North Africa. Hey, marhaba. Meet Amira, an eight-year-old who loves science experiments and basketball. Amira is bilingual. She speaks Arabic and English and is one of the newest friends on Sesame Street's Alan Simpson, which means welcome sesame in Arabic. I had a chance to catch up with her recently. I'm new to the neighborhood, but I love to make new friends. Lucky me, everyone here has been so welcoming. Amira uses her crutches and wheelchair to get around. 
Tell me about your wheelchair and what do you love about it? I love that it's purple and it makes me move like easily and I can move around anywhere I, I want, anywhere I want. What does the term accessibility mean and, and why is it so important? It's so important to include, to include different people to be in the society and to play with their friends and make life everything they want to do. And what do you do when you are nervous or scared? When I have a big feeling, I stop, then I take a deep breath, then I remind myself with all the good things that I learned. Because I know whatever happens, we have to be kind to ourselves as well as to others. That's some important advice. We asked some of our viewers to send in their questions for Amira. Hi Amira, my name is Yuna and I'm from Queens, New York. Who's your best friend on Sesame Street? Who's your best friend on Sesame Street, Amira? <laughs> I have a lot of friends. I can't choose just one. <laughs> we love to express with each other and like share our experiences. We are all so awesome. That's great because when we watch Sesame Street, we always think, man, you have so many friends, so many great neighbors. Our next question is something many kids have a question on as they are now back in school. Here it is. Hi, Amira. I'm Jelly from Louisiana. I know you do too, Sesame Street, but what's your best tip on making new friends? Oh, I like that question. What's your best tip on making new friends? Because some kids are shy and it's hard to meet people. Mm. It's really a good question. I think it's so important that you make a strong uh, connection with friends and like ask, ask them questions know what they want to do and what they like, then make ideas together. We also have a question about your favorite sport, basketball. Here it is. Hi, my name is Eileen and I'm from Queens, New York. And my question is, what are some challenges you face while playing basketball because of your disability? Yeah, is there anything that stops you from playing basketball? <laughs> it's, no, it's really nothing. I like to play basketball with my friends and it's making me so happy and nothing can stop me. All right, Amira, it has been a fun time talking to you. You too. Bye-bye. All right, let's head to Kentucky now where one eight-year-old boy recently had his heart set on buying a new game. So what did he do? He applied for a job. Details now from our friend Kristen Edwards with our NBC station WLEX. If anybody I know watching this, put a thumbs up to me and say, I know him, and you'll know me when you know me. Eight-year-old Nash Johnson is an energetic kid who knows what he wants. I just want to friend my friends on the Xbox who play the Xbox. But to get an Xbox, he needed some green. To get that, he needed a job. There's your name. <laughs> <laughs> your phone number, the email that you filled out. He hopped online and filled out this application for a dishwasher. That had to be the easiest job I knew. Also, I'm very good at washing the dishes. One small problem with his plan, though, is you got to be 16 to work for Drake's. That is unless you can find a loophole. You said you're under 18, yeah. Yes. It didn't ask me the actual age, and it didn't ask me when I was born, so I, so I put I was under 18. That kid is not afraid to fail. He is a go-getter. Mom Belinda had no idea he was gonna send that application, but in a way, it's not all that surprising. Financial literacy is like really important in our household. Nash has jars at home where he learns to save, give, and spend. Getting the job at Drake's was how he was gonna get more cash in that spend jar. He's like, I can get more money if I go get me a job. That's gonna give me more money than doing my chores at home the $5 a week gets me. <laughs> Drake's couldn't give Nash the job due to his age, but they did invite him to orientation. <laughs> he got that Xbox he'd been dreaming about. I was like, shocked, very shocked. He got what he wanted that day, but not everything. 
I wish I had the job in the Xbox. I do have the Xbox, but I wish I had the job. That's the kind of work ethic Belinda hopes he carries forever. His courage, too. Don't be afraid to jump out there and go for it. Fantastic. Go get it. You want something, go get it. Kristen, thanks so much. And Nash, way to go to set those goals, my friend. We should note, generally speaking, according to the U.S. Labor Department, the rules for employment vary in the United States depending on the age of a minor, meaning those under 18 years old. The minimum age for some employment is 14 years old, and there is a limit on the number of hours worked by those under 16 years old. And, of course, check with your parents or a grown-up for more information. Okay, let's switch gears and take a moment to pay tribute to some famous characters who are making news. First, guess what? Your favorite holiday villain, The Grinch, is turning 65 this week. The book How the Grinch Stole Christmas was first published back in 1957. The classic about the mean one was written by Theodore Dr. Seuss Geisel. Since then, The Grinch has been the inspiration for movies, musicals, and more. Did you know Grinch is even in the dictionary? That's right, Webster's defines Grinch as a grumpy person who spoils the pleasure of others. Meantime, one of the most famous and lovable beagles of all time, Snoopy, is also making headlines this week, and that's because the man who created Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and the rest of the Peanuts gang, the late Charles Schultz, would have turned 100 on November 26th. The cartoonist's widow says her husband expressed the human condition. He wrote about real emotions that kids are feeling, and it's always delivered with a little bit of humor. Who doesn't love Snoopy? Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, one 14-year-old girl from California was honored recently for inventing a device to help kids fight ear infections. Meet America's top young scientist. There's this picture of me going like, because I was so surprised. Out of hundreds of kids across the country, Leanne Fan was named the winner of the 3M Young Scientist Challenge in October. Her prize, $25,000. So the idea we talked about earlier. The 14 year old was awarded the title and the prize for her invention. Let me show you, okay. The Finson Headphones, a low cost pair of headphones that detect and treat meteor infections. Since children don't always want to swallow a huge antibiotic pill or have antibiotics in their ears, uh, I wanted to find a method that children would actually enjoy. So I came up with headphones because you can watch movies using headphones, you can listen to music using headphones, and it's a way of entertainment while also detecting and treating your midear infection. So how does it work? The headphones use sound to find out if you have an ear infection because a healthy ear echoes differently than a sick ear. And once you know that you have an ear infection... The next thing you do is turn on the light this is a blue light and it can be used to kill bacteria and I'm using it to kill bacteria on the surface of your eardrum. That's right. Scientists like Leanne's mentor, Dr. Ross Bailing, say blue light therapy can be used to effectively treat and kill bacteria, offering an alternate treatment instead of taking antibiotics. So blue light is, uh, as shown by Leanne and, and other scientists, able to effectively kill bacteria. Um, antibiotics are also very effective at killing bacteria, but over time they can build up a resistance to those different classes of chemicals and it results in a resistant bacteria that no longer responds to antibiotic treatments. A blue light, on the other hand, should continue to effectively kill those bacteria. And the method I focused on was using blue light because the bacteria can't develop resistance to blue light and blue light also has no side effects. The idea for Leanne's project came from her mom, who was always getting ear infections. Did you know over 60% of hearing loss in children could be avoided? If we can detect and treat these mid-ear infections fast enough, a lot of hearing loss will be prevented. Leanne isn't the only top young scientist in her house. Her older sister, Cara, won first place back in 2019. I invented the nano silver liquid bandage. When she invented a bacteria killing liquid band-aid. I thought it was really amazing that she was able to do what I had done. The sister scientists hope to work together someday. I think we, we should work together because we can combine our brains and then our projects will be even more amazing. But until then, the girls are encouraging other kids to get involved in science and dream big.
I encourage everyone to start pursuing science. Yeah, you can really change the lives of a lot of people in the future. So if you have an idea, then I would really, really suggest you to keep going and then keep trying to do it. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com. And we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition this Saturday on NBC. Check your local listing for the time in your area. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.